Very nice. Is this cool? Can, Can I, I need more rooms maybe over the back? Also, I'm recording and you're going on YouTube. And yes, back is good. Okay, back is good. I don't have Three that. Five, right. Now, Phylum Nidaria. What is the common name for members of Phylum Nidaria? Nidarians. I heard it. Who wants 20 points? Brandon out. Nidarians. Nidarians. Phylum Nidaria, also known as Nidarians. That's included but not limited to jellyfish, coral, hydras, and sea anemones. Sea anemones. I think it's an anemones. Anemones. Now, before we can dive in... <laughs> Work. Before we dive in, let's make sure we're all on the same page with our homologous traits. So go ahead and get to your cladogram part. Get to your cladogram part. And make sure for all the animals, see that line's for all the animals? Make sure you've got no cell wall. What's the other trait you should have though? What's the other thing that sets animals apart from everyone else? Fungi are multicellular as well. Really? Mm -hmm. oh. Fungi are also multicellular. So are plants, and they're like way up there. They're way up there. What else sets us apart? It's written on the board. Um, ingest food by digestion. Yes, we ingest food before digestion. That's the number four. Oh, sorry. We ingest food before digestion. Where do I put that? That that goes with no cell wall. That goes with no cell wall. Both of these are homologous traits. We ingest our food before we digest it as animals. Periphera, what sets them apart? They're sessile. They're the only sessile phylum. The entire phylum is sessile, means they don't move. They also have, you know, those cool ostia and oscula. That's common to all sponges. Right, periphera, they've got pores. They are. No, not animals. No, they're not animals. They're, they're fungi. They're a whole separate kingdom. Imaginatively called kingdom fungi. You know, like kingdom animalia. Once we get down here, so remember, we're, we're skipping Tenophora. So now we've got homologous traits with Nidaria and everybody else. So Nidaria and Bilateria. What do we have in common with Nidaria and everybody else? t No. No. Nidaria do not have bilateral symmetry. Um, tissues and nerves and muscles. Yeah, tissues. Tissues. Which is just a group of cells all working together. Make sure that you've defined that tissues are a group of cells all working together. Those are found starting right here, this branch. The one after periphera. Tissues. Yeah. And then on top of that, not just any tissues, we also have nerves and we have muscles for the first time in the cladogram. Which is important because if I went over and started like poking the sponge, the sponge would not find that annoying because the sponge has no nerves. The sponge would not even know that's happening. However, I go over and start poking a jellyfish. They know that's happening and they're going to get me. They've got nerves. They've got muscles. Which also means we're now going to be doing a brand new dance now. Locomotion. Yes. Who wants 20 points? Ooh. Oh, Liberty. Locomotion. Yeah, so now we're going to finally be capable of locomotion. Now, not everything in Nidaria is capable of locomotion. We do have some sessile creatures here, too. So we're not going to list that as a homologous trait. How we get to there. But there are several traits that we're going to talk about today that set Nidaria apart. Set Nidaria apart. And here they are. Let us begin. Phylum Nidaria. What kind of symmetry do they have? What kind of symmetry do they have? No. What kind of symmetry do they have? Radial yeah, they have radial symmetry. They have radial symmetry. Now, bilateral symmetry, we have one line of symmetry cutting us into the two sides, right? Bilateral symmetry, we have one line of symmetry cutting us into two sides. How many lines of symmetry do they have here in radial symmetry? How many lines of symmetry, t -Bell? Infinite. Infinite. Just like a circle has an infinite number of radii, which is the plural of radius. 
Ooh, see how it's radial? Ooh. Means it's round. Means it's round. They also, something that sets them apart from other phyla, good homologous trait for phylum cnidaria, are the stinging tentacles. I guess not all of them have stinging tentacles, but like almost all of them have stinging tentacles. On the jellyfish, you can see like the little lines, kind of. Are those the nerves? Yeah, I think so. They definitely don't have blood vessels, so I imagine they must be nerves. But wait, even if, the jellyfish would probably feel it if you were poking it, but wouldn't it not know where you are and just kind of drift? No, it's not nerves. No, it would feel it, but if you poked it, it probably would just like go the way you were pointing. Seeing so, yeah, as the last time I poked a jellyfish, it turned around and stung me. Yeah, what if you they seem away? to know where you are. Wait, that actually happened to you? Yes. What does it feel like? Like, how bad of a scene is it? Like, I oh, it, it literally, well, it hurts. It's not getting to my knee. Um, I, I thought it was different. I thought it was worse. Yeah. It, I mean, it kind of depends. We'll, we'll talk about that here in a moment. But here, I'll, I'll just tell you, we got stung by jellyfish. I was, in, uh, I was down in Honduras. We're out in the ocean. There's this really cool, fun city called like uh, La Cieba. It's like their big like party city, basically. Because it's on the beach. It's coastal. It's nice. So we're like, yeah, ocean day. Woo! And then we just start getting lit up by jellyfish. <laughs> now, for me, I didn't think it was too bad. So I think they just barely got me. But like other people on their group, like they had like welts like on their leg, like bruises oh that lasted for a couple of days, and and even when I got stung, it felt like being electrocuted. Oh. Like it felt the same as like if you accidentally bump a hot wire, like if you're like rewiring a socket. That's the, it, it. It hurt. It felt like being electrocuted, which is probably why in the cartoons, like right in SpongeBob, they like shoot lightning bolts. It's not electricity, we'll talk about that in a moment, but first, if you didn't write down that they have tissues, make sure you write down that they have tissues. And that's a group of cells all working together. Now the reason why, when they sting you with these stinging tentacles, is that it's not electricity, it has to do with what they're actually stinging you with. The tentacle is not actually the stingy part, the tentacle is housing the stingy part in a structure called a nematocyst. So where you wrote down about stingy tentacles, put something in your notes about how they have nematocysts on them. Which is horrifying because they're microscopic needles. Thousands mm. of them. That's annoying. No thank you. Now think about the word nematocyst. Nema, we haven't got to yet in our root words, but it means... Sting. It means thread. It means thread. Like nematodes, right? Thread worms, they look like a little piece of thread. Cyst, we have had though. What's a cyst? That's one of our root words. What's that one? Capsule. Capsule. So thread capsules. Microscopic needles. I'm going to show you a video zoomed in with a microscope on the tentacle of a cnidarian. You can actually see like cells moving around, like, like little cells moving around on the inside. Right, check this out. Here it is, zoomed in, boom, there's the nematocysts. Ooh. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, you like that? Is that just one tentacle? That is one part of one tentacle, not even a whole tentacle. Here it is in slow motion. Watch them. That one's already out. What? Ooh, look at them. Look at them coming out. Look at how many there are. What's that? What kind of an what animal is that? This is a cnidarian. Like he means what kind of cnidarian? I don't know. Probably a jellyfish. Boom! Whoa. Those are all like needles? Now, it's not just needles like a sewing needle that they stick you. It's a needle like an injection needle. <laughs> because the reason why it feels like you're being electrocuted is not the stabbing. It's when they stab you, they're injecting you with little doses of neurotoxin. That's a poison that attacks your nervous system. And it feels like being electrocuted, I thought. Yeah, thousands, thousands of little tiny microscopic needles stabbing you, injecting you with poison. Uh, now, we're pretty big. Imagine if they get a fish. Oh, Imagine boy. they get a tiny little arthropod. Oh, oh boy. boy. That means cool. Right? So do they only do that when they want to? Or is it, like, you know what I mean? Like only put the needles out when they want? Um, yeah, I, they can control it, I think. Ooh! When they, when they, like, when you get stung by one, do their needles go, like, in and out? Oh, they can stick them in and leave them in. Oh. 
Okay. Oh, and, no. then, and then like pump you, like pump it in. Like, like on top of that, on top of that, think about this now. The tentacles are not just on you. Dude. It's got thousands of microscopic needles in you. It is stuck to you now. They can take it away if they want, or they can leave it there. Okay, you're making this whole. <laughs> <laughs> so like, like if they sting you, but then they pull away. Like I said, they pull their tentacle away. Is uh -huh. there a chance to leave needles behind in you? Yep, there's a good chance a bunch of them get broken off. Remember, <laughs> they're microscopic, oh, and by yeah. far the needles are not the part you need to worry about. It is the toxin. The poison is what hurts. Is the needles are microscopic. So how big are those? Like, I, are, are they really small? Like, uh, the needles? <laughs> microscopic. Oh, it yeah, means very, mind. very little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's this? Like, I hear you pee. Yeah, yeah, good. I'm glad someone finally asked. I was oh, like, is he oh no. Here's here's what that does for you. It gets you peed on. What? What does that do what? for the sting? Oh, it does nothing for the sting. I mean, think about this. Okay, first, first off, you got injected with poison. Okay. There is nothing in urine that could possibly, in any way, shape, or form, neutralize any kind of poison. Ever. So in fact, in fact, this is how our body gets rid of water-based poisons that we don't want anymore. We pee them out. Poison on poison. On top of that, on top of that, the needles injected the neurotoxin into your skin, and this is getting peed onto the skin. <laughs> Just a placebo. It's not going to do anything. Not going to do anything at all. So, how so did I, I get started? Like, well, I mean, like, I imagine it was probably like some, like, you know, some people are, like, some Europeans, probably, they're out there, like, oh, having a good time, they have right? They go out yeah. in the ocean, they're getting lit up by jellyfish, right? And then, like, some, like, native, like, indigenous person is, like, hanging out with his buddy, just watching, like, ah, idiots. He's like, hey, wait, watch this. I'm gonna get this white dude to let me pee on him. <laughs> Sadly, I feel like that's exactly what I, I imagine that's how it happened. I don't really know. Either way, don't let someone pee on you. One, because you just shouldn't let people pee on you. <laughs> Two, it will not do anything for the jellyfish thing. That being said, I mean... It'll just make the experience worse. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Kind of like what Trevor said, kind of like putting poison on poison. Yeah. See, aren't you glad you took biology now? Practical, useful information. Like, don't get peed on. <laughs> so how would you, like, as a basis for him, get the poison out and try and numb it before, you know, the medical professionals arrive? Antivenom. But it's got to be specific to that neurotoxin. Yeah. Like, so they gave you a poison, you need specifically the antidote for that poison. So do all jellyfish have different neurotoxins? Yeah. Oh, come on! Why couldn't they make it easy? I mean, this is a whole phylum, guys. This is a whole phylum. Think about everything, think about everything in our phylum and how different they are from us. That's the level of diversity we're looking at. Is that why it's so hard when you get stung? Because if you don't have like the species identified, you can't really figure it out. Yeah, and on top of that, like who's gonna get like lit up by a bunch of jellyfish and think to be like, oh I better grab this to identify it later with my dichotomous key. <laughs> <laughs> so then how do they find the right toxin? Well antitoxin. Yes. Well hopefully you don't need it. Could they, if you grab them by the top, could they reach up and get you with their if tentacles? If their tentacles are long enough. No, it could, like, like an actual arm, could they just go like, there yeah. we go. Yeah, if their tentacles are long enough, they could get you. Dang. No, nice. thank you. Jellyfish are becoming more and more scary to me. Good. Hey, let's talk about, let's talk about the whole phylum here. All right, so look, look, look. Right here, here's periphera. Yeah. See how this kind of looks like your cladogram? So we've got periphera. And then we got tinnophora, which is the one that we're, we're skipping. And then right here, this is bilateria, that's everything with bilateral symmetry. AKA everything else on the cladogram, except who's this right here? Uh, which phylum is this that we're talking about today? I heard it once 20 times. Maddie. So this is phylum Cnidaria. If we get in there and we expand it, we've got this phylogenic structure, we've got this cladogram inside the phylum. Notice a bunch of them all end in zoa. That's one of our last root words that we're going to do during the year. Anybody want to guess what it means? I'll give you a hint. Zoa, zo, and zoo all mean the same thing. Animal. Animal, very good. So, the star animal, the cube animal, the hydra animal, and the scypho animal. And in fact, these two right here, they commonly get lumped together and called anthozoa. You don't have to write down this whole thing. 
And I'm recording this, so it'll go on YouTube anyway if you just are dying to have a cladogram later. Oh, but look yeah. right here, do write down anthozoa. Do write down anthozoa. We got 151 minutes, we're good to go. Or I've been talking for 15 minutes, I've been talking for 15 minutes. We got <laughs> anthozoa. Here's, I didn't get that. It's right there. It's Nemo! Oh. Anthozoa includes sea anemones. Sea anemones. Now, worth mentioning, this part of the sea anemone, guess what it has on it? Stingy stuff. Nematocysts. Nematocysts with for stabbing and injecting with the neurotoxin. Did you add that Nemo for, minute? for killing their prey and shoving it right here in the mouth. See the mouth? Yeah. Kill the prey, shove it in the mouth. Delicious. Good. Whoa. Now, here's the deal. Not only was Dory not electrocuted by jellyfish, she was poisoned. These, these th the clownfish don't live in sea anemone. Clownfish are not immune to sea anemone toxin. They're slightly more resistant than other creatures. They'll hide in the sea anemone. All right, it's like a it's like a deer hiding in a thicket of brambles. Why would they go in there? Safety. Because it's all stabby and pokey, and they know that the wolf doesn't want to go in there either. Yeah. Make no mistake, when a deer jumps into a thicket of brambles, they're getting stabbed. They're getting stabbed up real nice. But if a wolf was chasing them, the wolf would be like, ah, I can find somebody easier. I don't need to get stabbed. Doesn't do any good now because, like, there are no more wolves here, and we just shoot them. And, like, I don't have to go into the thicket to do that. But think clownfish, right? They're swimming around, they're swimming around. Here comes a faster predatory fish. I'm gonna get you, boy. And instead it's like, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. See them, and they get in there, you're like, ow, oh, yeah, ow, oh, yeah, stingy, stingy. But the predator fish is like, yeah, I don't feel like dying today. So they can withstand a little bit of the toxin. They're a little more resistant, but they don't live in it. They would definitely die if they spent too long in there. Thanks for ruining me, though. You're welcome. But they do, like, they don't always hide in there from predators. They kind of spend a good active part in there because the anemone lets them clean it. They eat the parasites off all that stuff. Yeah, they they're still, their cleaners. They still can't spend too much time in there, though. So it's kind of like a rental home. <laughs> it's, it's like so a, maybe Nemo and Marlin were just new to a new one. <laughs> it's a symbiotic relationship. I like this yes. picture because so uh, cool. it looks a lot like the one from Finding Nemo. Ah. Yes. I like this one because it's pretty and it's dark blue. Would, that one protects me. It's like doesn't. It's not even. Well, the the Ooh. the sea anemone doesn't exist for the clownfish. Okay. The clownfish That's just sort true. of happened on probably more like this kind of sea anemone. Yeah. Right. I was kind of These about. ones, right? And again, they look nice. No touching. Uh -huh. What about the longer parts that they're attached to? This part, I don't think have nematocysts. Those like parts definitely do. So how do they get all their food? They sting it and then they eat it? Food swims by, sting it, eat it. So they have to just... Sit there. I don't know how like all of them don't like die because of no food. Like, how would that many fish just... Uh, well, they, they, so they don't live in the bottom of the ocean. These are shallow, warm water. So everything's sort of swimming oh. through that area. And it just... It just so happens that a lot of fish always accidentally run into it. Mm -hmm. Fish don't know, oh, wow. wait. I mean, dodge. look, look okay. at this. Does this look like a vicious predator that'll sting and kill you dead? No. Yeah, okay, that's true. It, look, it really looks like, a, like, oh, I want to smell it dead, eaten. It's kind of like how like, animals are in the jungle. Like, if they're really bright colored, that means they're poisonous. Like, you shouldn't eat them or, like, when you're That's how it's kind of the same. A little bit, but the coral doesn't usually do the whole stinging thing. The coral is more of a filter feeder, also a member of anthozoa. So did you write down sea anemones and coral anthozoa? But they're also brightly colored. Here's the deal though. The fish, tropical fish, are brightly colored because they live in, on, and near all this brightly colored coral. The fish are brightly colored because they've evolved to try and hide and blend in with their surroundings. You saw sponges, you saw coral, they're bright, they're vibrant, they're pretty full. These fish have adapted so that they can hide in that coral. How do they just do that though? Like, they just, hey, I want to be green. Thousands of generations of the ones that looked more like this surviving, the ones that look less like you getting picked uh, off. Well, they're probably going to be a lot less know, fish because corals are losing time. their color. What eats coral? Like, does anything eat it? 
fish. So like. I always thought it was like a rocky type of thing. Well, so like a plant. you picked up their skeletons, right? So they do have that hard skeleton. Anybody want to guess what it's made of? Ooh. You wrote it down yesterday. A silica. No, the other one. Is it the one that starts with the A? The, the... It starts with a C. Oh, dang. Um, I was raised my hand, but I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. Calcium. Carbonate. Calcium oh. carbonate. So their skeleton is made out of calcium carbonate. Remember we said that that's a really important uh, uh, ion to be in the ocean? Because they need it for their skeletons. They need to get it out of the seawater so that they can grow. And unlike sponges, coral can take over a whole area. This is not one individual. These are many different coral and probably a few different species mixed in there. They live in warm, shallow water. So you end up getting a whole ecosystem in there, right? Because there's going to be algae and other floaties, other planktonic organisms that the coral are going to filter feed on. And then you got fish that feed on the, uh, the floaters and also feed on the coral. And then you get bigger fish that come in and feed on the fish and feed off the coral. And even bigger fish that come in and feed off the fish and feed off the fish and feed off the coral. <laughs> and swallow the spider to catch the fly. Mm -hmm. So you end up getting a whole ecosystem. And by when I say they can get big, you get like a whole food tree, like a whole or sorry, a whole food web going on. I mean, like they get big. Oh wow! This is a picture of the Great Barrier Reef. Just to give you perspective, that's a, that's a yacht. I want to go. This would be like a small yacht, probably like ten to fifteen feet long. That's pretty. You know, Wait. for rich families, yeah. this would be like a big yacht for like professional athletes and usually the people who own the teams right and these this cor look at this this is all coral reef it's so big they can't take their boats in any further it's so big there's parts of it you can walk out on like it's a beach Whoa. Isn't it like a sandbar? that's actually like extremely cool now you shouldn't walk on it for two reasons one you felt their skeletons it's not going to feel good on your feet Break Two, unlike sponges, where like if they break apart and you just help them reproduce, remember we got tissues, we got more complex organisms they now. Don't. If they break apart, they die. On top of that, calcium carbonate is kind of basic. We keep putting all this CO2 into the atmosphere, it diffuses into the ocean. Now we're lowering the pH of the ocean. On top of that, it actually binds up calcium carbonate floating in the water, which means not only is the coral getting bleached and dying, but it's actually losing the ability to make its skeleton because it's losing access to the calcium carbonate it needs. Yeah, because they're like losing their color, and that means more species of fish will die because they can't hide, lose their homes, and it's going to throw the whole ecosystem out of whack. Thanks, humans. Including yeah. cute seahorses. Thanks, oh, yeah. the sea well, the sea These have evolved to not just have the color, but also similar texture to the coral. Wow, we saw. <laughs> yeah, the, like the coral reefs are just turning like oh pure God. white, so everything just sticks out. P.S. These are clouds. No way. Whole islands. Now, this, these, these kind of atoll reefs will form around a volcano. So you get in the middle of the ocean, you get a nice volcano heating up all the water, right? And now the coral can grow because it likes that warm water. And then you get this whole like nice little fun ecosystem. People think this is land. No, animal. That's an animal. Well, a lot of animals. A, a lot of animals. That's coral. That's all coral. Wait, I want to go there. Oh Why is it where was it? Was that the Great Barrier Reef? That was the Great Barrier Reef again. Where's that at? Australia. It's where Nemo lives. Aww. How did he get white on the ground? He got from Australia to Boston. That's crazy. All right, check this out. What's this? See him. Um. Oh, it's a blisto and a sponge. <laughs> Wrong phylum. What phylum are we in? Nidarian. Nidarian. It's a member of Anthozoa. It's looking pretty uh, sea anemone. Okay. So here's, here's how it works. Once they reach sexual maturity, they'll make sperm and eggs. Right? They broadcast those sperm, fertilize, get a zygote. Notice they're also sending the eggs out, right? They send the zygote out. Alright, check it out. So you got your zygote. They develop, like the sponge, they have a ciliated larva. So you're going to like, 
but it's less of a needle swim and more of a needle crawl. So they'll get on the seafloor and they'll crawl and they'll find an area with like good nutrients, but they don't want to have to compete with a bunch of other coral, right? So they're, this is how they can like take over a whole area. They're, they're trying to get out to the edge where there's no other coral, where they can grow, develop the polyp form. Remember on those cards? Wait, Some of the ones you guys had a really hard time placing, right? Some polyps, some non-moving polyps, some free drifting medusa. Anthozoa, no medusa, they're all polyp. Did you write that down? Anthozoa, they're all polyp. I have a question. They're stationary, they're sessile. Other than the creepy crawly little larval stage, which really is just a means to find a nice area to grow, 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 reach sexual maturity, sexually reproduce, make more, whole deal. Why is the sea anemone good about the coral? Didn't you say that? No, the coral does the same, oh, same okay. type of same type of reproduction. I told you. Yeah. <laughs> He's uh, excited. <laughs> How long does technically a sea anemone live? I have no idea. You look it up, you tell me. Everybody feel good about the life cycle here though? Yeah. Sexual reproduction. Polyp is the only and main stage of life for all of Anthozoa. They have a ciliated larva. Did you write any of that stuff down in your notes? In a case ciliated there's a, larva? In case there's a quiz, you know, tomorrow. Um, so, I might be really dumb here, but they they don't have brains, right? Nope. So, how... I don't understand how anything without a brain knows what to do. Well, they like, have nerves. Well, how does that mean, like, I... I don't know. I'm just confused about how they know what to do just because they have no Oh, uh, well, I guess we sort of say it like they want to, but they don't really want anything because, you know, no brains, no emotions. Yeah. They just do stuff. So but, what? We didn't have well, keep in mind, though, like, like traits can be physical traits that you inherit. You can also inherit behavioral traits, right? Chemical wiring, that's a trait. You get that from your genes, just like anything else. So the ones who didn't do this, they got out competed. Natural selection took them out of the, out of play a long time ago. So we, we kind of it's called anthropomorph anthropomorphizing it. <laughs> we we like to humanize things. We like to say like oh it wants to do this. It it chooses or whatever. Like it's it kind of is. It's kind of not. Like they can they can detect chemical signals. They can they can do uh, sort of the equivalent of smelling things underwater, and they can seek. But they're not really like, ooh, that smells nice, I'll go over here. No, they just, they just do things. So effectively, like, including jellyfish and sea anemones, all members of uh, Nidaria are, like, effectively brain dead? Brain. But they do things. Brainless. No brain, no cephalization. They have nerves. Well, what happened if a human didn't have a brain? They would not live. Well, then, like, how do they live? They don't have a brain. They they're nerves. less. Not humans. They don't, they don't need a brain. Now, their, their bodies are a lot more complicated than the sponges, but their bodies are super simplistic compared to us. We're going to circle back to that, but first, let's talk about Medusozoa. Do I have to write that down? Yeah, Medusozoa. Guess what their main stage of life is? The free drifting Medusa, which again is swimmy ish, but against a strong current, they're really not going anywhere. Hey, can't, can't the. Uh... The uh, acicillated larva, can't that be like eaten up by like sponges or whatever? Mm -hmm. And fish. Any arthropods crawling on the floor. Well, like, isn't like plankton? Like, like, yeah, yeah, they're, they're going to be kind of planktonic, yeah. Okay. Are uh, man of wars part of this? Yes. So are these. Look, it's the jellyfish. Aww. Look at this. Slacker oh, no. fish. Just hanging out, getting a free ride. Also, if you're up here, the tentacles are down there. So this one seems safe from the tentacles. Also safe from any predators coming from below. Oh, man, that's, that's pretty, really pretty, pretty crafty. Oh, Here's a symbiotic relationship. Uh -huh. that's a that, we call that one commensalism, right? Because never mind, it's a commensal relationship. Well, it, that's a type of symbiotic. Oh, so never mind, it's it is a symbiotic types. relationship. Yeah, types. right. Because like, it's not going to hurt the jellyfish. Not going to really do anything good for the jellyfish. Helping the fish out though. Is it fish a, fish. So it's the one that where there's one benefit for one and the other's just natural. 
Look at that. That's pretty, isn't it? Looks like it doesn't That was pretty, isn't it? Yeah, that was in the deep sea. Wait, how did Jellyfish eat? I want to eat it. Same way you do. Where's their mouth? They take the food, they shove it in the mouth. Where is it, though? It's like I'll I'll show you in a minute, but first, well, it's it's right there. But first, you're not adequately afraid of these jellyfish yet. You've forgotten our, you've forgotten the whole video of the nematocyst. So let me remind you with this picture, this one right here. Now, this is Scyphozoa, a whole different group, whole different group. Now, this thing though is massive. Now you look at the picture, you're like, okay, that could be big, that could be small. Here it is on the beach. No. There, that's that part. Why is the kid biased? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which means these tentacles are like from here to down there. You could get tangled in those. They, 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 would, they would kill you good. They would kill you good. Look at that. Look at how big it is. That's a Skyphozoa. That's a, that's a... Dummy. I don't know. Well, I mean, remember, they don't have a body cavity. They need the water to help support them, right? So when they wash up on the beach, that's all they got to them. I'm pretty sure I could outrun that on land. <laughs> In the ocean... You wouldn't be able to swim faster than a jellyfish? No. If we could run on What a big a thing is, Connor! <laughs> if it was... If you were here and it was over there and you were swimming still this way... You. Now, these it's, ones, okay, yeah, like... You do a U-turn just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we, all, we only have five minutes left here, folks. Isn't there a jellyfish that has, like, tentacles, like, uh, at least, like, 30 feet long or something like that? Then? Wow. Alright, now, check this one out. This is the polar opposite of that huge one. This is a member of Cubozoa, oh, no. commonly known as the box jellyfish. Oh, no. This is one of the top three, if not the number one most deadly thing that lives on this planet. Oh, that's... Okay. So look at it, this is with like a big light shown on it, right? So they're like bluish, translucent, which means in the water, you can't see them. On top of that, they're like this big. Okay, they're like this big, see-through, this big, carries enough venom to kill four people. Just carries that much neurotoxin, just in it's like walking around money, kills four people. Now, as if that wasn't bad enough, when they sting you, you've got about ten minutes to get the anti-venom before it's over for you. So you're just dead anyway, like basically. Basically, if you needed more reason to never go to Australia's northern coast, this does it for me. Me too. So like, I read something about this, but don't they kind of live kind of deeper down in like the twilight area? They're, they can kind of be all over. I yeah, because one girl, them. they showed a video, one girl was just walking around, she was like four. One of those things was like right in ankle deep water. She immediately fell down after it stung her. Oh yeah. Yeah, and, and anything that's going to kill you in ten minutes, I imagine uh, isn't going to feel good when it's stinging you either. I read about that. What the? Here, oh, hey, there's a the cute one. Emo. Little Starzella. This uh, one, what I like about it is it gives you a really good view of their mouth. It's right geez. here. Oh, God. So sting, sting, stab, dead. Put it into the mouth right there. Right there, up inside this little bubble. Gosh, I made it look way cuter. Oh, shit. Hydrozella, you saw these on the table. Not these, but you saw these on the table, right? The Hydra. Let's talk about the Hydra for a minute. The Hydra, they... They can send off some Medusa, but the Hydra, their main stage of life is the polyp again. See it? All polypy. And these are sessile. Now there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, many Hydra on here. See how they're, they're sort of sending off some Medusa maybe over here. What they do though is they just chill like a sea anemone. They stick out their, their tentacles with their nematocyst. Some poor sucker comes along, sting, dead, shove it in the mouth. Some poor sucker. Medusa. Oh. This thing over here. Way more horrifying. Connor, tell him what its name is. It's called the Man of War. Portuguese Man of War. For those of you that aren't adequately impressed with that name, you should know it's because Portugal, back in the wooden ship days, had by far the best navy. Like England wasn't even trying. That's how much better their navy was. The Man of War was their biggest, most wreck you ship. This will wreck you. What else is cool about it? This is two separate organisms. What? The float is a separate organism from this. In fact, this part is a hydra, a polyp. It's sessile. 
it can only move around because it gets the big floaty part that floats above the water and gets carried by the currents. They don't ever go underwater. Luckily you can see them coming. Unless they get popped. Now because they're above the water you can't see them coming. The problem is though, their tentacles can be like yay long to like oh daddy. <laughs> Here's one washed up on the beach, that's a small one. When I was in Florida I saw like, like there was one beach like probably every 10 feet had these. Maybe they were dead, maybe not. I wasn't about to touch them. <laughs> because when you get stung by them, here's a person that got stung, here is this person's scars. Ooh. Permanent scars. kind of cool. From the tentacles. Oh. And they have barbs, oh, right? Crazy. Because I had, my brother was surfing with his friends, mm -hmm. one of those things got picked up by a wave and it landed right on his back. Oh yeah. He was digging barbs out of his back. And when that happens, you could look like this guy. Oh god! Oh, my god. Here he is in the hospital. You can see where this thing just laid its tentacle right across his back. Remember those microscopic nematocysts? Stab and stick. Stab and stick. Extremely painful neurotoxin. In this quantity could be deadly as well. Here's how he looked months later. Permanent scarring from the nematocyst. This can kill you. Don't <laughs> Let's talk about how they make more of themselves because that's what I want. More things that can kill me. <laughs> so medusozoa, they can go through a polyp phase, right, like the hydra. Then they can put off a medusa. They just do asexual reproduction to bleb off a medusa. This would be like instead of me being a sponge and broadcasting my sperm, instead I just make a whole like copy of myself that can swim and throw it on over there to find the ladies. <laughs> so. We get the egg, we get the sperm, they do fertilization, boom, you get a zygote. Look, swimming ciliated larva again. Are you seeing a trend with the larva? They crawl around until they find a place that's good for them. Then they grow into a new polyp. Then the polyp can also bud more polyps, because why not? And it can bud medusa. Whoa. You asked about where they put their food. They put their food in their mouth. Inside they don't have, they don't have a body cavity like we do, they have a gastrovascular cavity. First time first time that we should write down. Oh, you are correct. You should write that down. Gastrovascular cavity. Gastro meaning what, Michaela? Um, stomach. Stomach. Vascular being like a system of like deployment, a system of transferring. Unlike everything else, they only have two tissue layers, or what we call two germ layers. So everything gets in here, and it's just an open cavity for a stomach and to get all these cells, all the nutrients. They don't have amoebocytes making it easier for them, so they just rely on simple diffusion. Well, also yeah. means if all the food gets wadded up over here, over here it's getting the nutrients, and over here, not so much. Do all jellyfish have www.bumblebee.org on them? No. <laughs> just, just this picture of this one. However, what do you notice is not shown in the picture dealing with food? Sam? Their stomach. Well, this is their stomach. Oh, yeah. How are they going to get rid of the waste? They poop it the out food goes in. Mouth there, the food goes out through the way it came in. You have two-way traffic. No, stop, stop. Open those back up. Write this down. Two-way digestive system. Now you're like, oh, that sounds cool. Like a two-way street's better than a one-way street. No, because that means the mouth is also the anus. No, no, no. Food goes in, gets digested, nutrients absorbed, waste goes back. It's like if we pooped out of our mouths. All right, wait, wait, wait. Your homework for tonight is make sure you have all those card traits down.